talking about hair transplants, what needs to be considered when we have like transplanted hair, it's longer, maybe like mine or even longer, mm -hmm. and we consider SMP, what needs to be considered there? One thing uh, that needs to be considered is, uh, you know, wh what we're, theoretically, what we're applying is like a foundation of SMP. So in the future, if you buzz cut your hair, it looks good, okay? Um, so that should be the goal. That should be the goal. I mean, the goal should be a foundation of SMP, which bridges the gap, bridges the contrast between the light, possibly pale skin, the light skin, and the dark brown hair, dark black hair, whatever it is. So we're bridging the gap, right? We're making an improvement by like 40%, okay? That's all we're doing, right? Now, in order to do that, I think it's better to buzz cut the scalp for a more accurate result. I mean, you can get it done within your long existing hair by sectioning it off, absolutely fine. But for a better and a more accurate result, uh, for a be for better blending, it's better to just buzz cut your hair, not so short, just enough so that we can see the scalp, right? It could be a number one, mm. okay? And at least then we could stretch the skin. And also, obviously, it's more cost effective if you buzz cut the scalp because working within long existing hair takes me a, long, a, a, lot, a lot more longer Mm. So I'll charge more of a premium, right? So mm. what we that's what we normally do, right? So buzz cut the scalp. Not only would you get a more accurate result, but you'll get uh, it'll be more cost effective and a better result. Mm. So that's what I'm thinking. So it will look so, more natural, also. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I mean, it will look natural anyway. I mean, because mm. the pigment that we're using is is not going to be super dark and so on, right? Uh, but we'll be able to blend it a bit more better and so on. So, mm. um, yeah, and obviously. If you're if you've had transplanted hair, your hairline's transplanted, staying within the existing hairline, or maybe slightly reconstructing the hairline will be a great idea. Just stay within. Obviously, you don't want a double hairline impact. To sum it up, maybe you want to make sure that uh, the buzz cut looks natural first, because it can happen that uh, somebody will need to buzz it after after many years of you know after mm -hmm. the transplant, and maybe mm -hmm. some um, existing hair will fall out, so they will want to maybe cut it shorter. And you want to make sure that it looks primarily good at that stage. The foundation, and yeah. Foundation, then we can, then yeah. We can, then we can go based on that. Yeah. How would it be on the hairline if I have like transplanted hairline, and then how would you proceed from 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 there? Would you st where would you start? You know, adding more pigment. I, I I normally stay within the existing hairline with transplanted hair, right? Just making sure it depends on the look that you want. Some some guys want more of a defined hairline. Uh, for, for someone like yourself, I'll just stay way behind with the hairline and just keep it soft and natural as possible. Mm. Um, so the SMP will pretty much be undetectable mm. for, for anyone else. Because you would start like, what, half a centimeter behind my existing hair? Or about, a centimeter? about, yeah, yeah. 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 We'll just feather into the hairline very slightly. Mm. Mm -hmm. And it will be also uh, <coughs> lower density uh, pigment depositing compared to if you do exactly totally bald head SMP. We're gonna go with the same kind of buzz cut, you know, um, you know, more density in the crown midsection, and then softening out on the hairline depending on obviously the individual. Some guys might want a very defined hairline, but yeah, keeping it soft on the hairline is always better um, because that's how your natural hair looks, right? Even if you had mm. a full head of hair, um, the dots will go slightly smaller. It will just kind of feather out to nothing. So ideally, again, start with maybe one millimeter to three millimeter buzz cut after your hair transplant. Maybe if you decide after a year, you can buzz it and then they do the, the pigmentation. Yeah. yeah, yeah. But, you know, if no one wants to buzz it down, you know, uh, we can work with them that as well. It's not an issue. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah but I also certainly feel if you do it uh, with the buzz cut, you can precisely blend it. Mm -hmm. So it's going to look uh, more un indetectable at that length. Because if Correct. you do it on the long hair yeah. and then uh, the client buzzes it, it may not be that homogenous, right? Yeah. And do you know what I tell those clients? I'm going to be the one buzzing your hair off. Mm -hmm. I am, you know, if someone doesn't want a buzz cut, which is so, so common. I mean, we get it done, you know, it happens on a weekly basis. When, mm -hmm. um, client doesn't want to buzz their hair off. They've got a wedding coming up or they've got an important holiday or whatever. Mm -hmm. They just don't want to buzz their hair off. Um, so it's not mandatory, uh, but I just tell the client at that point is, okay, um, if you decide to buzz your hair off in about three, four years, just, I, I, you know, I've done my best with the blending, but um, just mm. to make sure everything is 101% accurate, just come in and see me and I'll buzz it down for you. Mm. That makes sense. So in case somebody had a hair transplant and uh, 
he wants to increase the the density in the front maybe so would you pigment the front and back as well to make it look you know uniform yeah or would you do just one section no we'll, we'll try and future proof as much as we can we'll make sure that buzz cut looks a hundred percent but maybe it wouldn't be so densely pigmented behind yeah. or with so with the dark or just a very lighter pigment bit that's light, how you yeah, would do the it pressure yeah ah, okay interesting